Side navigations are important, especially within SaaS applications. You see them in products such as Stripe, YouTube Studio, and Gmail. However, there can be a pain to build. In this tutorial, we're going to look at how you can build a smooth SaaS-like side nav using React.js, Tailwind CSS, and Framer Motion. Our navigation will have a section for link buttons, but also an area that can be expanded into another side nav. You may be thinking, wait, why Framer Motion? Can I not just do this with CSS? Well, yes. However, Framer Motion allows us to create more nuanced animations in a cleaner fashion, and also because it's such a great library. Anyway, you can of course take this and apply it to your own applications. The code will be made available on GitHub. But before we continue, if you are a web developer looking for an engineering role, then you can head over to webdevjobs.io, where we have a list of job openings with their salaries. You can also sign up to the newsletter, which will send jobs directly into your inbox. New jobs will be uploaded on a weekly basis best of luck. Like I said, we'll be using React.js, Tailwind CSS, and Framer Motion. So head over to your terminal and make sure you're in the right directory to create your project using Vite. Naturally, I will also be using TypeScript for this project. Once that's all set up, CD into the project and install Tailwind CSS, Post CSS, and Auto Prefixer. Once that's done, initialize Tailwind using NPX. And then we can install the two additional libraries, Hero Icons and Framer Motion. Inside of the project, the first thing we're going to do is delete the app.css file, as we will not be making use of it. Then inside of the index.css file, we can replace the content with Tailwind Base, Tailwind Components, and Tailwind Utilities. Then in the Tailwind config, we need to add the following to the content property. All of what I'm doing can also be found on the Tailwind docs. Once Tailwind is all set up, Let's head over to the Google Fonts site and look for two fonts that would go well with our application. The first one I'm going to go for is Poppins, for which I'm going to select Regular 400 and also Space Grotesque, which will also be Regular 400. Once I've selected them, in the top right corner is the Basket button, which will show what link tags you need to copy over. Once copied, head back over to your project and inside the index.html file, you can paste them within the head tags. Whilst we're here, I'm also going to rename the title. Then back inside of the Tailwind config, I'm going to extend the font family to include Poppins, which is sans serif, and Space Grotesque, which is also sans serif. In the index.css file, I'm going to set the background to be a neutral 950 color and the default font to be font Poppins. Now that we have our fonts, within the app.tsx file, I'm going to remove everything and create a mockup of a dashboard. For the main tag, I will have the classes width full, height of the screen, flex, flex row, and the position set to relative. Then inside of that, a section which will have a flex column, a padding of 10, a margin left of 20, width four, and a gap of five. The reason why we have such a large margin on the left is so that we leave room for our navigation bar. As for the heading dashboard, we will give that the classes of text for Excel and a color of neutral 200. Underneath that, we will just create some empty boxes to give our application some weight. Our self-closing div will have a full width a height of 80, a border neutral 500 over 50, a background of neutral 800 over 20, and rounded corners. Then under that, a div that has flex, flex row, a gap five, and width four, which will contain two divs that will have a border neutral 500 over 50, height of 60, a width of a half, a background of neutrals 800 over 20, and rounded corners. You can then just copy that and paste it underneath. Once we export the component and run the application, in the browser, you should see our layout with a lot of space on the left-hand side, which is where our navigation bar will be going. Back inside the project, create a new directory within source called components. Inside of that, create a new file called navigation.tsx. For now, let's return a nav with a div inside and then just export the component. For the nav tag, provide the following classes. Give it a background of neutral 900, a flex direction of column, a Z index of 10, a gap of 20, padding of five, a position of absolute, top and left zero, the height taking up 100% and a shadow of neutral 600. As for the div, give that a class of flex direction row, width 100%, justify between and place item center. Inside of that, we can create a dummy profile icon with a color gradient orange 500 and amber 700. We next need an arrow icon that will hint towards expanding or collapsing the navigation bar. We can use the hero icons package. However, given the way we will be using it, it might be easier to copy the JSX. So if you head over to heroicons.com and search for arrow right, you can copy the JSX from the first results and then back inside of the project, underneath the dummy profile image, you can paste it in between a button. For the SVG, we need to change the width and height to eight and the stroke width to one. Then inside of the app.tsx file, we can add the navigation 
component just above the section so that if we head over to the browser, we should see a navigation bar slowly taking shape. However, right now the expanding and collapsing functionality is not there. So let's add that in now. Within the navigation component, import motion from the frame of motion library. And then underneath we can create a variant object that will be attached to the nav tag. We can call it container variance. And for the first property close, we can have the object that will contain width to be five rem and transition, which will contain a type set to spring, damping to 15, which represents the strength of the opposing force and a duration set to half a second. Alongside close, we can have open, which will have a width set to 16 rem. And as for the transition, this will be the same as close. With these variants, we will be telling the navigation bar that if it is closed, the width will be 5 rem and if it is open, 16 rem. The transition tells it how it should oscillate between the two values. Then for the nav tags, we can add motion, set the variance to be container variance and initial to close so that it starts off with a width of 5 rem. We can then import the hook, use animation controls from frame of motion, which will be used to trigger the variance. Within the component, we can create a use state, which will be is open and set is open with a default set to false. In my case, this was automatically imported. Then create a variable container controls set to the use animation controls hook. We can now create a use effect that will listen to the state is open so that if it is true, then the container controls will trigger the open property within the container variants. Otherwise, it will trigger close. We can then pass container controls to the animate prop in motion.nav and then create a function called handle open close. For now, this will just set is open to its opposite. Then for the button that contains our SVG arrow, we can give it the classes of padding set to one, rounded border of full and flex, and then set the on click to be handle open close. So that now when it is clicked, the animation will be triggered. Back in the browser, we can see a smooth animation taking place when we click on the arrow. And if you notice, there is a slight bounce that occurs when it opens and closes. You can mess around with the damping to see what results you get. However, when the nav bar has expanded, we want the arrow to be pointing the other way, indicating that it can be collapsed. In order to do that, we can create a new set of variants called SVG variants and have close to contain a rotation of 360 and open to a rotation of 180. Just like we did with container controls, we can set a use animation controls hook to SVG controls and inside the use effect, set the open and close triggers. SVG path then needs to be set to the motion extension where we can set the variants to be SVG variants the animate to be SVG controls and transition to have a duration of 0.5 with ease set to be ease in out. If we head back to the browser, we can see that when we click on the arrow, not only does the nav bar expand, but we also get a smooth arrow rotation. Our nav bar is looking quite empty, so let's go ahead and add in some more content. We can start by creating a div container with the classes flex that has a column direction and a gap of three. Then within the components directory, we can create a navigation link.tsx file. Within that, we will return an A tag that holds a paragraph tag. Props will also be passed to this component, so we can create an interface for props that will hold children set to react, react node, and name set to string. For the A tag, we can style it so that it has flex, a point cursor, a stroke of 0.75, a stroke color of neutral 100 on hover, but 400 by default, text neutral 400 and 100 on hover, place item center, a gap of three, a background of neutral 700 over 30, transition colors, and a duration of 100. Underneath the A tag, we can add the children, which will be hero icons and then for the paragraph tag we can add the classes text inherit font poppins overflow clip white space no wrap so that the text remains on the same line and a wide tracking within the paragraph tags we can pass in the name prop for the a tag also remember to include a padding of one and rounded corners back inside the navigation file we can add in the navigation link component for the first one, we can set the name to be dashboard and within that a chart bar icon from Hero Icons, which has automatically been imported for me from Hero Icons React 24 outline. We can give that a class name of stroke inherit, a stroke of 0.75 as this is not inherited and a width of eight. If we go back to the browser, we can see the icon being displayed for dashboard when it is collapsed. But when we expand, we can see the name for it also. We can now add more navigation links. For the next one, I'm going to set the name to projects and the icon to be square to stack icon, again, automatically imported. Then one called tasks with the icon document check icon, another one for reporting with the icon chart pie icon, and finally, one for users with a user's icon. Now, if we head back, we will see the links being displayed on our navbar that only shows the icons when collapsed, but also the text when expanded.
For the next part, we're going to create a section for projects so that when one is clicked, another side navigation grows out of the current one. Underneath the div that contains the navigation links, create another one with the same class names, flex, flex column and gap three. Then create a state that will hold the selected project. This can either be a string or a null value. We then need a component project link, which will represent a project. Inside of that, we can return an A tag with a div within it. For the props, we will have children, name, and the set selected project function. The A tag will have the same classes that we added for navigation link. So we can just copy that and add them in. Underneath the A tag, we can add the children, and for the div, we can have the following classes. Flex, overflow clip, place item center, justify between and width full. Within that div, we can add a paragraph tag with the classes text inherit, truncate, white space no wrap, and tracking wide, and then throw in the name prop. Underneath the paragraph tag, we can add a chevron right icon, which again comes from hero icons 24 outline and have the classes stroke inherit, stroke 0.75, and a width of eight. A function for on click is then needed, which we will call handle click that just sets the selected project to the name that is passed. Be sure to then assign it to the A tag. We can then go back to the navigation component and then add the project link inside of the newly created div. For the first one, I'm going to give it a name of virtual reality, pass in set selected project function, and then within the tag, create a closed div with a minimum width of four, margin on the X of two, a pink 600 border, fully rounded corners, aspect square, and a background of pink 700. We can then paste them and change up the names and colors with the second one called Apple Vision Pro and colors set to indigo. For the third, we can set that to Porsche with the color cyan. And for the last one, we can have it called Secret Project with the color yellow. Now, if we head back to the browser, we should see four colors in our nav bar that also show the project names when the nav bar has been extended. The final thing that we need is another nav bar that pops out when one of the projects has been selected. For this, we need to head back to the project and create a component called project navigation. This will return a nav that contains a div. We will also be needing motion from frame of motion. So import that too and add them to the nav tags. For the props, we will have selected project, which is a string, is open, which will be a Boolean value and sets selected project will be project select state function. For the nav variants, we can define a variable that will hold an object that contains close. That will be an object with the value X set to minus 300 and opacity zero so that it will come in from the left. Then for open, we will have X set to zero and opacity set to 100. We can then add the variance to motion nav, set initial to close, animate to open and exit to close. The reason why we need the exit prop is so that we can transition the project navigation when it unmounts from our application. As for the transition, we can set the duration to be 0.25 and ease set to ease in out. For classes, this will require JavaScript. Therefore, we need to wrap it in backticks. We need a height of 100%, a flex in the column direction, a gap of eight, a width of 64, a position of absolute, a background neutral of 900, margin left of zero. Then if it opens, left 64, otherwise left 20, a border on the right with a color set to neutral 800 and a padding of five. For the div, we can add the styles of flex in the row direction, a full width, justify between and place item center. Inside of the div, we can add a H1 tag that holds the selected project prop with the classes of tracking wide, a text color of neutral 100 and a large text. Alongside it, we can add a button that has the X mark icon from hero icons with a width of eight and a stroke of neutral 400. For the button, we can state that when it is clicked, it will set the selected project to be null. We can then add an input field that will represent a search bar with a padding on the X of three, a padding on the Y of two, tracking set to wide, loud rounded corners, a background of neutral 600 over 40, and a text neutral set to 100. Underneath the input field, we can add a set of navigation links within a div container with the classes flex, flex column, and gap three. Then underneath that, a navigation link with the name set to progress and the arrow trending up icon with the classes stroke 0.75, stroke inherit, and a width of eight. We can copy this and paste them a few times with the next being team members and the user group icon. Then in review with the pencil icon, one for in progress with the bolt icon, another for up next with the cursor arrow raise icon, and finally project settings with the adjustments horizontal icon. For the final touch, we can mock a section of team members within a div that has class names flex, 
flex column and gap 5. Then a H1 tag that states team members with the tracking wide and text neutral 300. Underneath we can create an A tag that will represent a team member with class names flex, flex row, gap of 3 and place item center. Inside of it we can add a user icon with a width of 8, fully rounded, a stroke of 2 and a stroke color of rows 800. For the team member name you can add whatever you want but for the styling add tracking and a text neutral 400. Then just copy and paste it two more times and play around with the colors and names. Once done just add a padding of 1. Then back in the navigation component we need to wrap the entire nav with empty tags and then import animate presence from frame emotion. This allows components to animate out when they're removed from the react tree, which is perfect for our project navigation. Within animate presence, we can say that if there is a selected project, then render project navigation with the props selected project, set selected project and is open. We then just need to call the function set selected project within handle open close and pass in null so that when we open or close the main navigation, the project navigation closes as well. Now back in the browser, we can see how the project navigation menu shows on the right when clicked with a smooth animation. Also depending on whether the main navigation is expanded or not, the project navigation shows either further right or less. However, there is one thing that I do not like. When switching from one project to another, there is no hint that we have changed, apart from the fact that the title of the project at the top changes. It would be cool if the project menu moves in and out when changing. To do that, we can go back into the project link component and then within the handle click, we can set the selected project to be null and then have a timeout so that after 250 milliseconds, the selected project becomes the one that we clicked. With that in place, we can now go back and alternate between different projects, giving us a smooth animation as we do so. And that folks brings us to the end of this tutorial. You can of course take this and make it your own and share it within the Discord server linked below. Otherwise, stay healthy and stay safe and I hope to see you in the next video.